Hey everyone. Through the course of my time in ministry, I have uh, heard a few questions that seem to always repeat themselves. Um, two of those questions is, uh, what is the importance of the uh, biblical language? Uh, you know, why is it important that um, I'm aware of the Greek or the Hebrew, or why is it important that we even give those consideration when we have translations? And then the second one would be, um, what is hermeneutics? You know, where do I go with what I read in the Bible? How do I know if what I'm reading is applicable? Stuff like that. Um, and so I just worked up some, uh, a, little, a brief discussion for us to talk about. Um, first, I want to take this to say, this is not going to be a theological discussion. This isn't going to be something that's real deep. It's just going to be something that's real simple. And hopefully that will further your understanding of these areas. Um, in no way is this meant to be a never-ending resource for this. This is just to point you in the right direction and kind of help you figure it out. Um, first, let's start with the Greek. Um, the thing about the Greek text, and also with the Hebrew, I say Greek more because I actually know uh, the Koine Greek. Uh, the Hebrew I, I, I find it difficult to understand. Um, not to say that I don't have an understanding of it, I just don't know it. Um, let me tell you this little story. Uh, let's say I was trying to speak to a Spanish-speaking person. Uh, through a translator. And I said something like, I really like, I really like your boots. And the translator didn't really understand the English language or something, and, or he got confused or something, and translated something completely different, like, um, I love the way you wear your boots. That completely changes the meaning just by just by a few different words being inserted or left out. Um, and it's the same kind of basic principle with uh, translation. It's a translation. That's what it is. It's not it's not the original thing. It's a transla translation. That means a group of people went to the original text and translated it into a language that we can more understand. Uh, there's two kinds of translations. There's a uh, phrase by uh, a verse by verse, and then a thought by thought. A thought by thought translation is a translation that's not necessarily specifically what the Greek says. It's more of the general idea of what it's saying. Uh, two common translation, uh, Bible translations for that would be the uh, NIV or the New International Version and uh, the Message. Um, and these are not as accurate. Oftentimes they are easier to understand, uh, put in a way that makes more sense to us, but they're not the most accurate, and if you want the more accurate of a translation, you would then have to go to a verse-by-verse. Uh, verse. And the difference is, in a verse-by-verse verse verse translation, the, uh, the translators will go through, and as the word appears, they'll literally translate it word-by-word, word, and then fit it in the sentence and make it make it make sense to where it's not all rough and, ha and harsh, but at the same time where they're not inserting something that they don't feel is there. Um, uh, some good uh, ideas of those are uh, uh, the ESV, the English Standard Version. Uh, I'll give you the, the acronym for it and its full name. Uh, another well-known uh, well known uh, translation for verse by verse is the King James Version. Uh, came around 1611, and since then has been uh, often updated. From that, actually, many uh, translations broke off from the RSV, the NASV, uh, a whole slew of other ones. I don't really want to get into the history of the uh, translation of the Bible, but hopefully that'll give you some understanding about the differences. Um, <clears throat> one thing that's why it's important to at least have an understanding of, or you know, know that this is this is just a translation is um, because ideas are lost. Uh, there's some stuff in the original text that we just don't get. You know, like uh, sometimes a word will be um, a word will be modifying another word, 
but when they translate over to English, it sounds like it's modifying a completely different word. Um, for instance, uh, Jesus says, uh, drink ye all of it. Is he referring to all of you drink of it, or is he saying you drink of all of it, what, what you're drinking? See, there, there's just those different things, and that's a very simple uh, example. But it just goes to show you how in the Greek and in the Hebrew, it'll be modifying stuff that we just oftentimes miss miss it. And also, with some of the words uh, in their original language, we miss the uh, the original meaning uh, behind the word, or the original thought process behind it. Uh, in Greek, it's not it's not translated by word order like in English. You know, in English you would say the yellow bus is going fast, but in Greek they would add uh, it. You tell what goes where. You know, what's the uh, definite article? I mean, sorry, there's only one article. Um, what's the subject? What's the uh, object? Different things like that by the uh, ending of the word. Um, and they would add, they would move it around in the sentence depending on where they, what emphasis they wanted to be where. For instance. Uh, fast is the yellow bus going. You know, it, 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 it's saying that they want to draw a special emphasis to the fact that the yellow bus was going fast. So they would have scooted it either to the beginning or to the end of the sentence, depending on what em what emphasis they wanted. Um, and then a lot of the times we just kind of miss the idea that the author is trying to portray, because in translation there's really no way to translate it. You know. Um, Another thing to consider is that Jesus, depend, based on what we know about Jesus and about the history and context of Jesus' time, Jesus spoke in Aramaic and uh, possibly also in Koine Greek as well. Koine means common Greek. It was an, off, off, uh, an offsprout, of, offsprout of classical Greek. Um, it was it was the Greek that everybody knew. You know, it wasn't real uh, real hard to understand. It wasn't like if you're a real scholarly, you, you know. Um, uh, where am I going with this? Uh, oh, here's where I'm going with this. Uh, so Jesus uh, was speaking to Jewish audiences and also to other audiences. So chances are that he was speaking both Greek and Aramaic. I've heard it said that uh, he only spoke Aramaic, but I'm not quite sure of how how that is. Like I'm saying, this is not an all to resource, this is just to help you guys get on your feet with your setting. Um, in, back then it was a great achievement uh, to hold the same thought that the original speaker was saying in Greek when you were penning it over. Um, you know, for instance, whoever was writing down the words that Jesus was saying, it would have been uh, an achievement, you know, a, a great a great skill to have been able to uh, pen down exactly what he was saying uh, on paper, uh, especially if uh, he was speaking in Aramaic and the writer was writing in Greek, which the New Testament is in Greek, um, in case you didn't know that, and then the Old Testament is written both in Hebrew and uh, Aramaic. Um, so, that should give you a little bit more of an understanding of that. Uh, let me just look at my notes real quick. Uh, also, another thing that uh, oftentimes I hear it said, oh, you don't need to know about the Greek. Anybody who says, oh, just go back to the original Greek context is just a hypocrite. And that, to me, sounds very um, biased and also unintelligent. Because the only people who usually say that are those who don't know it. That's like... Um, giving someone a guitar and saying, you don't need any study aids. You don't need a teacher. You don't need books. You don't need to know how to tune it. You don't need a tuner. You don't need uh, chord charts. You don't even need to know what a chord is. You don't need to know how to hold the pick, how to, how to pick with your fingers. You don't need to know any of this stuff. Here's a guitar. I know. It's a little bit like, well, that's not really fair, you know. Um, as someone who does know the guitar, uh, I can say you do need those things. It's a little bit... I didn't even know... When I first played the guitar, I thought you just put the finger over the fret. I didn't know you had to push it down. So I was storming it and wondering why there was no there was no sound coming out. And, and then uh, my friend told me, well, you have to push it down, and then it causes the pitch to change, which causes a different note, and then in, in combination with other notes, it causes a chord. And I was like, 
Oh, that makes sense. I understand it now. Because I had an understanding. I, I learned, I studied. Um, also, uh, let, let's say um, there's a visually impaired person, uh, which could include a fully blind or just legally blind, depending on how severe it is. Um, person, you don't need a, uh, what is it called? Uh, you know those uh, walking sticks, you know, the, the, uh, uh, those walking sticks that they walk around with. It's like taking that away from them and saying, you don't need this. Well, how would you know you, you can see, you know? Um, that's a little bit unfair for the blind person. Um, and there's no way that you could actually know whether that person would need it unless you were actually visually impaired or unless you talked to them. Uh, I think you guys get the idea of what I'm saying. Um, that's basically all I wanted to say about uh, the original language. I hope that, guys give, that gives you guys a, an understanding more of, of uh, what it is, why it's important, etc. Um, but I have found my study of the Greek, uh, Koine Greek, uh, the Biblical Greek, to be most helpful. Um, if you, excuse me, if you want to get a general idea of the Greek language or language, or if you want to learn Greek, uh, William D. Mounts has actually not just this book. He also has study aids, uh, memorization cards, charts, all kinds of stuff. Um, this book is called Basics of Biblical Greek. This is the second edition. He came out with the third edition, which is actually a little bit, in my opinion, better than the second edition. Um, this was published by Zondervan. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. Uh, I'm sure if you go to Zondervan's uh, publishing site, they'll have it there. Uh, a very valuable resource, just an introductory Biblical Greek uh, book. Uh, Zondervan also has published uh, a bit Introduction to Biblical uh, Hebrew. I'm not sure who did that one. But once again, I'm sure if you just look at Zondervan's, Zondervan's website, they'll have all the information you need for that. Um, the next topic I want to talk about is uh, hermeneutics. And for that, uh, here is an introductory hermeneutical book uh, that I would recommend. It is done also by Zondervan. It's by J. Scott Duvall and J. Daniel Hayes. It's called Grasping God's Word. It's, uh, this right here is the second edition. Uh, I would highly recommend this book because it's a very nice introduction. If you want to go real deep into hermeneutics, I'm, I'm sh there's a lot of other books. Uh, unfortunately, I can't think of any other titles or the authors or the publishers right now. But uh, there are many, many, many uh, books that will help you get a little bit deeper in your herme hermeneutical studies. Now, what is hermeneutics? Um, hermeneutics is basically, if I can put this as simple as possible, hermeneutics is the study of the text then, if that makes sense. Uh, let me walk you through a little bit of hermeneutics. Um, so first, I wrote it down right here, um, it's then and there. You read the text and, you know, it meant something then and there. Then you, uh, you figure out what's di different between that time and our time. Uh, which can inc include things like culture, uh, time, language, situation, covenant, government, uh, the group of people. Uh, for instance, Jewish people back then were very interested, I don't know about still now, I'm kind of out of my element with answering that, back then were very interested in historical lineage. So if you notice in the book of Matthew, there's, uh, it's commonly assumed that it was written towards the Jews, and there's a whole thing with Jesus' lineage in there. Whereas the Gospel of Mark is assumed that it was written to the Romans. They were more, you know, cut to the point, cut to the chase. Tell me what the, tell me the facts. You know, real. Uh, it's a difference if you if you're real acquainted with America. It's the difference between the the East Coast and the Southwest. You know, down south everybody's all, you know, real calm. You can sit there talking for 20 minutes to the person and you still have no idea what their answer to your question was. And whereas up in like Michigan or uh, uh, New Jersey, you say something, they say it, they answer it. just like that. It's real simple, real calm. Oftentimes the two annoy each other. It's a similar similar difference in that. Um, got a little bit off uh, off uh, task. Um, so there's a difference between the people and the culture. You know, there's a real change. Um, 
There's a difference in uh, predominating ideas of the time. There's a difference in government. There's a difference in uh, uh, well, the social, cultural, the so social and cultural acceptances. For instance, um, back in Jesus' day, women weren't, let's say, respected as they are today. Um, even back before then, more so, they were considered more as property and less as actual people. Whereas now, in modern America, there's, you know, liberated women who are able to work. They're able to, um, have the same education as a, as a man. They're able to work over a man. They're able to teach men. They're able to, you know, do all these things that were just completely closed off to them back in the day. You know, um, there's just that radical difference. And with that difference, there comes a difference in the interpretation of how you understand something. Um, so when you come to the biblical text, oh, let me say this first. It's like, for instance, if I were to write a letter to my wife, um, and at 